Delighted so. to be joined by Paddy Wallace. Paddy, uh, as always, you have an interesting take on everything. The European Champions Cup, the New Look Champions Cup, less teams, and everybody says we're going to get a better product. On what you've seen so far, are we getting a better product? I think certainly more competitive games, yeah. I mean, obviously, it is more competition because there's probably less of the weaker teams in the, in the competition. Obviously, you want to grow the game throughout Europe, and that's why they always had two Italian teams, and now that's reduced to one. Uh, so you don't get that that easy as many easy groups probably. Also benefit benefited from that in the last couple of years. Whenever we had Italian teams in our group, probably makes that a wee bit easier to get out of the group. So that advantage is gone. You say the advantage is gone, and uh, we talk about Munster's group. People called it the you know the group of death, and they came back with a fantastic victory in their opening game. Ulster beaten, mm. and now they play Toulon, who many people believe they can actually go on and make it three. European titles in a, in a row. Yeah. So how are we going to do in that one? Well, there's nothing more motivating than a, than a, a loss and a bad loss in Europe, and that's probably what uh, you would term the the away trip to Leicester last Saturday. And uh, you know, it should hopefully stir a reaction. Uh, you, we know this is make or break now for us. If we lose this game, you know, ultimately we're out of the competition, and uh, you know we don't want to fall at this first hurdle. We're we're a good enough team, I think, to beat them. You know, I'm sure it's going to be a full house at the Kingspan, and uh, I think uh, probably the lack of form and the rustiness will have worn off. And uh, it'll be an interesting selection as well to see who uh, who Doki picks in the team after after last weekend. So, a few questions. Did we all fall into uh, the trap, almost thinking that on the back of you know the great victory the week before that mm -hmm. yes we'll go to Leicester and we beat them last year and okay they'll be up for it, but we'll win it and suddenly then after a dismal first half we're really on the back foot and we never really recovered we didn't yeah and that's that's very true that's a good point uh sports funny that way uh nothing motivates you more than fear and we probably lack that wee bit of fear going over to welford road uh, on the weekend you know and years gone past it would have been a, a fearful place but because we had won there previous years and because we were coming off a a very good performance against glasgow and many of many punters may have been tipping us to to get the victory over in Leicester, you probably take uh, that fear goes to the back of your mind a wee bit, and uh, you probably lack that little edge, that wee chip in your shoulder that you need whenever you go to tough places like Welford Road and get wins. Now, Toulon will come to uh, Ravenhill, come to Belfast this weekend. There'll be bucket loads of fear. I think we, whenever we look at that fixture, <laughs> yeah, and, and that's <laughs> the other worry that you, that that you play within yourself because. Of uh, of the challenge that that you face in Toulon are, are a massive challenge. They've won the the European Champions Cup now two years running. They they hope to do three and with a squad and, and and team littered with such superstars, you can understand why there may be a bit of fear. So hopefully we can control that and you know we know everything's on the line this weekend. We certainly won't lack motivation. The Ulster public has been um, spoilt, I would almost say, in recent years, you know, with Ulster and indeed Irish success. But Ulster's always been there, thereabouts, and knocking on the door in the old Heineken Cup. But it's disappointing to hear from an Ulster perspective that, you know, if they lose this weekend, you're virtually saying, that's it. Yeah, I know. <coughs> I know it, that's, that's how competitive this competition is. Uh, you've got to win your home games, and that's, those are your bread and butter. And, you know we've got the toughest test now in our first home game. We we didn't do the the job last week, which maybe would have given us a buffer uh, going into this week. So we know what's on the line, and uh, I expect uh, a reaction from the guys. I know I haven't spoken to a few, and they'll be disappointed with certainly some of the individual performances. And 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 as a collective, there was a, a sense of flatness. I was at the game last week, and uh, there probably wasn't that same intensity that there was. At the Glasgow game the week before at the Kingspan, so hopefully we can we can uh, replicate that this week. You talk about the reaction from the players. Y you know him; he's uh, our new coach, Neil Doak. Mm -hmm. uh, how will he react to that? Do you know what? You know what's what, what's his? Uh... Well, it'll be it'll be a test for Neil. Uh -huh. uh, you know, Les Kiss, who will be coming in as our director of rugby, who's been uh, who's been alongside Neil since the start of the season. He's now got his Ireland hat on. He's down preparing for the the autumn internationals, and uh, I'm sure he'll be in touch with with Neil and, and uh, trying to give him as much guidance as possible. But uh, you know, it's a big week for Neil. He's got a few, you know, decisions to make. That center center partnership is is a key one. Uh, do you maybe try and bring 
uh, the veteran Ian Humphreys back in. Uh, so there's a few few decisions to make. Uh, you know, the centre partnership is something that was uh, was moved during the game against uh, Leicester, and it seemed to be more effective moving Payne to the to full back, which I think is his best position, and bringing Darren Cave into thirteen, and then moving Stuart uh, Olding, who's a lovely footballer. Mm-hmm. Reminds me of myself a wee bit as a young guy, <laughs> uh, and and we looked we looked effective. We scored offset piece, and uh, the back line seemed to be moving. And that's nothing. That's not to take anything away from Stuart McCluskey, who's really come on very well this season. Having said that, you know you go in and you play against the the cream of the crop in Europe, and when you miss a player like 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 Ruben Pinar, you know mm-hmm. you know that that man is just. He, he, I know those lads are fantastic, but he he's, he's just a cut above the rest, isn't he? To really to a very large degree. He is. I'm not sure what. McLean's would uh, price him at in terms of what he'd be worth to the team, but I would say you're looking probably six point seven points uh, if Ruins in the starting lineup. And you know he was missed last week. Certainly, uh, his kicking game. You know, playing away from home, you got to establish field position, and, and Ruins probably one of the best in the world at doing that for you. And it'll be the same this weekend if he's not fit to play. Yes, we'll miss him, but uh, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Paul Marshall, if he gets the nod, will will want to redeem for his, his intercept last week, and he'll be very motivated to put in a, a good performance. Now, on the overall picture of uh, the Champions Cup, it it, uh, it has arrived on our doorstep after a, a huge amount of gnashing of teeth and uh, federations and heads being knocked together yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. Uh, if you put your if you put your gaze over it. Uh, the bookies have uh, Toulon again as the favourites. Mm-hmm. Would you go along with that? Are they are they still very much the team to beat? They have su- they have such depth in their squad, so it's hard to look past them. They'll be motivated to be the only team that that's uh, that that has won it three times in a row. So that'll be uh, driving them as well. Uh, you know, Leinster traditionally are very very strong as well, uh, and always seem to do well in this competition. But uh, if I was to pick a side now and you gave me 20 quid to place a bet, although I wouldn't get much of a return on it, it would probably be too long. And whenever you take a look, you mention Leinster, the fact that they're always there, they're about monster. Yeah. You know, they're basically, they're the Graham McDowell of, of rugby, I think, you know, they never know when they're beaten, they just keep coming and coming and coming and coming and like it was uh-huh. fantastic last week for them. And they're in a particularly difficult group now. You're talking about how the fact the Champions Cup is, is, uh, is a wee, wee bit harder. Uh-huh. That's like a group of death. Yeah, it is, and you know, Munster didn't have the best start to the season in the, in the Guinness Pro Twelve, and uh, and at half time, I was getting on a flight, and I bumped into Keith Wood, and he told me the score was twenty three seven, and they were down, and, th- and we thought that was it. We landed in Birmingham, and uh, Munster had won the game. Incredible turnaround, and they're they're so capable of that traditionally throughout the years to to be able to pull back massive leads and. Uh, and they've done that. What they've done now is they've created momentum uh, going into their, their home match. And, uh, you know, if they can come away with two wins out of two, they'll be in a strong position in that group of death. I know you're talking about Toulon. Obviously, you can't see the, see past them. Uh, Leinster are third favourites, Northampton f- fourth favourites. Then comes Clermont, Toulouse, Racing Metro, followed by Munster, 16 to 1. Saracens are second favourites at 11 to 2. Mm-hmm. Do you fancy a, them? Do you think they're a good side? Yeah, I think they'll have learned. A lot from last year. Uh, you know, it's very hard to to go deep into competitions, which they did, and they ended up falling at the final hurdle in both. So, hopefully, for from their point of view, they they'll have learned from that experience. I'm sure. Uh, perhaps they may rotate a wee bit more. I'm not sure if you can concentrate on one or the other. Uh, but perhaps a bit of spreading your resources will put them into a better position. But. You know, to make two finals, uh, they're certainly well worth their, their second favourites tag. I want to go back just to, to get a, a final uh, reflection on Ulster. You know, you played for Ulster, you played for Ireland. You, you know, you've been there whenever there was very few people, let's say, up at uh, Ravenhill or Kingspan, Ravenhill as it's called now. But the, the whole the whole package of Ulster rugby now, it's, it's, it's fantastic, isn't it? It's uh-huh. a great atmosphere. It's a real feel-good factor for, for the city and indeed for, for, for everywhere. And also they really have captured, they, 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 they've actually captured the hearts of everybody, not just rugby people. They have. It's, it's tremendous to see. I, I made my debut flip back in 2000, I think, and uh, I, I, 
I remember going to pre-season straight out of school and that was that 99 team that won the cup and uh, it was such a privilege, all, all I really wanted to do and uh, and to be able to play for sort of 13, 14, 15 years has, has been great and to see the product, as you say, grow into something that's almost world class now, certainly in Europe, it's uh, one of the top clubs with the top facilities, the top training uh, facilities, great coaching now uh, and obviously that that gives the supporters a great product to come and watch and enjoy on the weekends and uh, it's up to the players it's up to the management to keep putting on putting out good teams for the supporters to buy into and go and support and then it's up to the players themselves to try and get across the line and bring back some silverware be lovely to see it and just a word about the supporters too because the atmosphere i have to say sometimes you can go to uh, maybe the aviva and watch Ar ireland play rugby and i know People like Alan Quinlan and stuff like that and other columnists have complained about a lack of atmosphere in the Aviva uh -huh. and even in Crow Park whenever Aaron played. There is no lack of atmosphere in Belfast when us to take to the park. I know, it's usually a Friday night when everybody's had about half a dozen pints. So <laughs> <laughs> make sure but uh, no, it is. It's a, it's a unique atmosphere as well and uh, it's, it's something that makes it tough for the uh, visiting team to come perform at, uh, which is to our advantage, obviously. But uh, yeah, like in any sport, uh, the the fans need not need something to to get behind and cheer and and uh, and, and show their passion. And, and also, I've been doing that for the last number of years now. Uh, and uh, and that Friday night atmosphere, there's there's nothing better in Belfast.